Yes, good morning. Coffee Conversations with Greg J is on. Yep, yep, yep. <sighs> Tuesday, Tuesday in Southern Cali, Southern Cali to the world. That's what we're doing here, Coffee Conversations with Greg J. Making some adjustments in the, in the studio and everything. So we made up a little makeshift. I'm sitting here in the corner doing some stuff communicating with you, you know, as we say in Hollywood, the show must go on. And so it is Coffee Conversations with Greg J. You can get us uh, on uh, all of our Facebook pages, you know, Coffee Conversations with Greg J, Beach City Perspective, Beach City Radio, of course, my personal page, uh, Columbus Song Coffee Company. We're also on YouTube. Please uh, like and subscribe as we try to increase our algorithms over there. Like and subscribe that page uh, on YouTube. Coffee Conversations with Greg J. We'll also repurpose the audio uh, for audio podcasts. And wherever you get your favorite podcasts, you can get Coffee Conversations with Greg J. It is available. I heart. Uh, Spreaker, everywhere. And soon and very soon, EUR Web, Lee Bailey, shout out to Lee Bailey. Thank you for uh, opening the doors to Coffee Conversations with Greg J. Just got to get a few little mechanics together and then uh, you'll be able to see us, uh, I'm sure, by maybe tomorrow or end of the week for sure. At the latest, you'll be able to see some episodes of Coffee Conversations with Greg J on EURweb.com. Shout out to the Living Legends Foundation. What a great um, reunion, I guess you could say, uh, of sorts. Uh, last weekend, um, in my generation of uh, entertainment industry, broadcast in industry executives, uh, the Living Legends Foundation was founded to uh, provide financial assistance to those who need it. Maybe there's uh, pressing medical bills or uh, you know, uh, emergency community services. This is a nationwide organization, uh, record company executives, uh, radio executives who have made their mark across uh, the history of our industry. Um, you know, this is what the foundation does. If they need help, the foundation exists to help people in need who have come up through our industry. And last weekend, they had their annual gala. We were up in Hollywood at the Tagalian Complex and, uh, you know, dressed up real nice and fancy and uh, had a great dinner hosted by Dee Dee McGuire out of Atlanta and probably about 30, 40, 50 radio stations she's on. Um, Charlemagne the God from The Breakfast Club got an award and Hank Caldwell and just a few others. Congratulations to all of the honorees of the Living Legends Award. But, um, you know, and your accomplishments should be uh, acknowledged, no doubt. Contributions to Black culture, Black music, uh, you know, uh, all over the place. With that said, it was just great to see everybody, man, from back in the day and really reflect on the history that we have made and pushing forward the culture. Um, we are unapologetically Black in that way. And that's uh, what uh, our, the president, David Linton, kept you know, reminding us. It was really, really good. And then the next day, Saturday, we had the picnic way out in the valley, Van Nuys. And uh, that was really, really fun, too. Good to see so many, so many, so many people. Congratulations to that. A lot going on in L.A. City Council. Man, man, man. I, you know, where to begin? But that's not why we are here today, except to just acknowledge that we see the story and we'll comment on it one of these days. Jasmine Kanick's got a great little blog about it on her website, jasminekanick.com. Uh, you know, so go on there and she's giving you the play-by-play -play of what's going on there. Uh, really, really interesting. And then just kind of 
heats up an already heated mayoral race in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, they have a big debate on this evening, and I'm going to be peeping that so that we can just kind of keep up and see what they have to say about this latest controversy coming out of L.A. City Hall. Long Beach, where we're located, Dream Creator Studio originates from Long Beach, California. They got a great uh, heated, intense mayoral battle here. Uh, Susie Price against Rex Richardson, two sitting city council members going up for the seat that will be vacated by Dr. Robert Garcia as he ascends to Congress. And so, you know, the main, main thing that I'm mentioning all of this is not to endorse. I do have my personal endorsements, but we really, uh, through our platforms, want to encourage you to vote. Get out there and vote. Last time, uh, what was that, in June, there was a low vo voter turnout. Unacceptable, especially in the African-American community. We have got to get out there and get to the polls. Uh, uh, remember, we had uh, Pastor Mark Whitlock on last week, and he said, souls to the polls. Is that what he said? That's what he said, yeah. Well, listen, I'm going to get on to it right here. We are celebrating the Black Stuntmen's Association, 55 years of existence. Wow, right? It's a really a, a big deal. 55 years of existence, you know. Uh, man, that's a, that's an accomplishment. And the Black Stuntmen's Association has uh, quite the legacy, including, y'all, we learned when we had, uh, what was her name? Margaret Krieger was on here, the attorney. And she reminded us or informed us, I should say, that Justice Clarence Thomas, yeah, him, <laughs> One of his advocacies was making sure that people of color were getting jobs in the movie business. Who knew, right? So, uh, hey, you know, we're going to celebrate alongside the Black Stuntmen's Association. Let's call a good friend in, uh, Mr. Robert Sacedo. He's the CEO of um, Community Build. You know, they're headquartered over there in the Merck Park. They're doing things historically. Uh, across our communities in South Los Angeles, making sure that equity and inclusion is at the forefront of all these different corporations. Let me just try to see if I can get control of my mouse and I'll bring him in all right now. And uh, yeah, that's uh, what's going on. You know, we're improvising this morning and I see that, oh, there we go. We're improvising this morning, and I see that we are really having a hard time at it, uh, but that's okay. The show must go on. Robert Sacedo, good morning. There we go. How you doing, Greg? Doing all right, sir. How are you today? I'm great. I told you I'd be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you oh, know? That's good stuff. Well, you know, hey, uh, first of all, uh, I guess I should just go ahead and take this opportunity and ask you, what are your thoughts of our newest controversy up there at L.A. City Hall? And then we can get into the meat of the matter. Well, you know, one of the wonderful things about being from Los Angeles is we are not without controversy. But our controversy leads to change. And mm -hmm. uh, as disappointing as it has been to watch over the last 48 hours, um, with the council members that are involved. Um, this, this smacks in the face of the systemic racism that has existed down in City Hall for, for, for decades. Mm -hmm. But it's also a gut check for people to look at you know, how they feel about others. We are, we are a diverse city and we have, we've maintained a diverse city council, but we've got to think more globally about the citizens of this great city and, and of course, those who make these types of mistakes have to own up to the mistake and, and do what's right by the people and represent accordingly. I, I don't think if people, uh, those who feel the way that the comments that were espoused um, uh, that took place um, feel that way should not be in leadership. Um, uh, there, you know, there are some casualties to this, that conversation that, um, you know, that's going to sting. I, I hated to see Ron Herrera uh, leave the union. He's a great man. Uh, I have a friendship with Ron. Um, but it was also disappointing to hear the comments that uh, took place. Mm -hmm. You know, I was having a conversation with someone yesterday and they were wondering out loud, like, you know, now it's hard to, you know, they felt that trust was violated because, you know, they might be shaking our hands in one hand and 
you know, dogging us out on the on the other. You know, do you feel that to be true? Do you see wrestling with trust issues now? Mm, I wouldn't say wrestling with trust issues per se. I, I think that, you know, um, you know, I think the good book teaches us to love everybody but place our hope in no one. Mm. And, and so, um, you know, these are the human frailties, if you would, that occur. Uh, people are going to be focused on their self-interest, particularly in the political environment. And we just have to make sure that we are, we, we stay true to what that old mamaism that mm -hmm. good manners are always in style. Good manners are always in style. Pardon me while I have a praise break. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There we go. Hey, look. You know, we're here to talk about the Black Snubmen's Association and shout out to Albert Lord there. You know, he introduced me to a fantastic attorney, a law veteran who uh, shared with us about the Black Snubmen's Association, but also shared that Clarence Thomas was a staunch advocate for people of color in the entertainment industry. And I've been taking that story everywhere I go because it was kind of unbelievable at the time. And if you go back and you listen to that podcast, you see there's like a palpable pause when she mentions right. his name. And she simply, after the pause, she simply says, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. He, uh, well, he missed his opportunity uh, in many ways to, to an another person that missed the opportunity to do what was right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, but there's history there. And I'm glad that he was supportive of this wonderful organization and, and i actually fell out of my chair when i heard that i was like you know, the same guy you know, but, right? uh, but you know it's true yeah 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 so okay why don't you do the honors and first of all give us a little bit of background of the black stunt men's association and then introduce our friends i see henry's in there and i think i see alex and let's just go go for it there mr salcedo let us know about the black stunt men's or i guess we should say in these days stunt persons well it is stunt persons um but uh, but the black stunt persons association was founded in 1967 by eddie smith and uh eddie uh noticed that uh white stunt men were being you know uh painted if you would uh black in those days and you know i we i i'm a bit of a hollywood family so if you saw the movie imitation of life the little girl at the very end that's my mother no way and, and we you know several of my movies with dorothy dandridge and sydney portier my aunts and mom were uh in those films and i remember the stories of my mom telling me about uh them having to be uh painted because they weren't dark enough and so, you know, it's a, it's a shameful thing that, that Hollywood did, uh, but uh, uh, Eddie decided to uh, take a stand and uh, was featured in It's a Mad, Mad World, directed by Stanley Kramer. I think I lost you for a second there, Greg. Are you there? Well, as while we wait for Greg to come back, hopefully you all can hear me. Um, the... Uh, Oh, Albert's, Albert's out there. Hey, Albert, how are you? Uh, the full title is the Black Stuntmen and Women's Association, by the way, uh, just for those of you who are, aren't aware of that. And I guess Gray's going to join us back in just a moment. I think he lost his signal and uh, we'll be in. So right now it's Conversations with Greg, temporarily hosted by Robert Salcedo while Greg comes back on live. But we're here to talk about the Black Stuntmen and Women's Association. Uh, a 55 year old legacy organization that made a true difference in Hollywood and opened up the doors for many people from stuntmen to actors and actresses uh, and, and of course playing a key role in the creative economy. So I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Uh, hopefully Greg will be back with us in just a moment. And in the meantime, uh, why don't I talk to you a little bit about what's going on at Community Build. We are um, hosting this year our 30th anniversary uh, at the Sheraton on October 27th. You can go to communitybuildinc.org uh, and there's a banner you can click to find out more information about our 30th year anniversary. And it's the first time we've ever done a gala. Um, we're extremely proud of what we're doing in the community. Uh, we're uh, just blessed to be servant leaders in the work that we do. And we wanna continue down this path. 
the purpose of our being involved with the Black Stunt Men and Women's Association is we have uh, launched into taking on the role of, of discussing the creative economy and what it represents to our community. This is a $6 billion industry from film to radio to magazines to digital arts, et cetera. And our goal is to make sure that we get um, our folks in the pipeline to take full advantage of that. You know, I was recently uh, made aware of a study that McKinsey did and that the financial impact that African-Americans have had on Hollywood and by not, but haven't been properly compensated for is about $10 billion um, over several decades. And when you think about the economy of scale of that and our ability to participate in the wealth creation of those particular opportunities, um, you know, this is a great platform for us to begin to talk about things like the creative economy. My goal is to become a source of opportunity for people who have a, a desire to uh, play in that particular space and be uh, readily available to do so. Um, now, hopefully I'm doing a good enough job to maintain this uh, conversation uh, around the stuntmen, but uh, Eddie Rochester Anderson, again, appeared in the feature film, It's a Mad, Mad, Mad World, directed by Stanley Kramer, and a white stuntman in Paint Down was uh, Rochester's stunt double. Eddie Smith, an extra coordinator on the film, was inspired after seeing this to initiate and create the Black Stuntmen's and Women's Association. Uh, Paint Down is a longstanding Hollywood industry practice, AKA blackface. And so um, many actors uh, and actresses, uh, those who were uh, white, as well as uh, those who were African-Americans who were more fair complected, uh, were often painted down uh, to, to look darker uh, in the films. Uh, in those days, it was black and white and uh, it was just a common practice. And many cultures, uh, to include indigenous peoples, Asian Americans, uh, Latinos, uh, those uh, situations uh, were played uh, by white actors. And so, it, you know, it doesn't make sense to have someone who's not black play a black person in a film if in fact you could find someone who is capable of doing that, capable of uh, performing a stunt, et cetera. So hence, came the, uh, the Black Stuntmen and Women's Association. The BSA was supported by the NAACP and the EEOC in 32 court actions regarding job discrimination, and they won all 32 times. Think about that for just a moment. 32 times in court on a discrimination case for the same issue. There was something wrong with going on in America, and there was something wrong with the system when in fact you think about the fact that we had to go to court 32 times to be heard and taken seriously. Marge Krieger was the EEOC principal litigator and former staffer of the office of Clarence Thomas. Prior to coming on this morning, we were um, laughing a little bit to discover that Clarence Thomas, Justice Thomas, Ooh, uh, actually sorry. Had a that, in, that. Um, in <laughs> as you were saying. Greg, I, I was continuing to talk. I didn't know if I was live, but I said, I'll just keep the radio show going or the podcast going until we uh, uh you get back on are we good i'm good go go right ahead sorry so, about that no, that's quite all right so i was just getting leading into our conversation earlier about how shocked we both were when we discovered that uh clarence thomas uh played a key role in these cases to for the black stuntmen's association black stuntmen and women's association in their fight on those 32 cases uh and with marge krieger being the lead eoc principal litigator so um, a lot of history here over the last 55 years. And as I said earlier, the California creative economy is a $6 billion a year industry. And Community Build, as I was explaining earlier, is engaged in this conversation around the creative economy. And, and by the way, thank you for being on this journey with us, Greg. Um, you've done a stellar job over, uh, over this year in making sure people understand that it's, it's bigger than just film. It's bigger than just radio. It's bigger than just print. It's digital. It's all things creative and making sure that we uh, create uh, uh, familiar faces in creative economy spaces uh, along the way. Yes, yes, it's very, very important. And I just want to take this moment since you were talking about the creative economy, just let, let folks know. I just I just started my term as the president of the Arts Council for Long Beach, the president of the board. Oh, and, you know, really, I saw that. Yes, really excited about that. Congratulations. 
So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Now, this is this is important. You know, we, we have a pop up display, by the way, that we've had up for a few months now at, at the community build, build um, site at 43rd and Degnan in Lamert Park and wrapping around our entire building from 43rd uh, all the way to the front. We have um, uh, a, a Blacks and Cinema display that nice. features the Black exploitation period. And uh, I think it was Sheila Frazier that was Ron O'Neill's uh, yep. co, uh, co, co actress. I saw her yesterday, by the way. Ah, yes, yes, She's yes. A very beautiful woman. Um, yes. Saw her at a funeral I was at yesterday and uh, was glad to, to, to get reacquainted with her. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, Sheila. She's a, a good woman, and and you're right. She looks just like the movies, right? <laughs> right. Just like frozen in time, you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> good. That's okay, right. why don't you bring our guest in, uh, Mr. Sacedo? Say it again. Go bring our guest in here. Okay, you have another think, one. Uh, we have Alex. I got it. Okay. 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 There's Alex. Alex in his car driving these his streets. Well, well, no. Here's the deal, guy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Greg and Robert. Good morning. I, uh, I had told Albert I just got out the dentist chair and I was I rushed. I had to rush him along a little bit, but mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure I got here so I could be a part of this uh, this historic moment here for the, for all of us that's concerned. There you know. You so right. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, you, yes, yes. Let's see. I think we have Henry. Mr. Henry King, there he is. There's Henry. Hey, Henry. Hello. Hey, we got yes. you. Do you hear? We got you. We here. Move you hear your hand out. Move your hand out the camera, Henry. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Where is this? Hey, hey, no, we can hear you, Henry. We can hear you, Henry. I'm trying to get in. You're, you're in. We're in. Um, okay. I think you just turned your camera off. We'll bring him back in just other. No, we'll bring him back in just a second. He'll be back. You know, good, he's good. He's a stuntman, not a tech guy. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the other union. That's the that's, other union. That's the other uh, union. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's try him now. Let's see. Let's see. Henry, oh, yeah, win the game. There he is. Oh yeah. Yes, the fearsome foursome. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. First of all, brothers, what's black stuntman? I mean, what's that like? Well, you know, that goes a long ways back. Uh, Robert tried to give you a brief history on what we had done and why it was done. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, years and years ago, 55 years ago, in fact, uh, 1967, uh, when we really started this thing because of the fact of, uh, the white guys painting down uh, to double all our black actors at the time. Mm -hmm. And that's why we named our group uh, black men and stunt women, because the the other groups in Hollywood, they only started the Stuntman's Association and Stunts Unlimited only had the name men in, in mm -hmm. establishing our group. So we brought women in from the beginning because mm -hmm we had a lot of white guys doubling women and the women was getting kind of pushed around see they didn't really realize they were being discriminated against themselves because you know we had a lot of westerns going then and mm -hmm. a lot of them would put wigs on and dresses to drive those stagecoaches and horses you know so we say well we're we're going to do this thing a little differently mm -hmm. and get them all uh qualified to do uh whatever we thought might might need to be done by a black actor because you know at that time that's when you know like uh you talk about sheila frazier and the rest of them they didn't have stunt doubles so we had to get women prepared to, to double them in different movies you know so uh that's how we got started and wanted to make ourselves qualified so we wouldn't have the excuse about well we gave them a chance but they couldn't do it or, you know so mm -hmm. always cognizant of the fact that uh, we want to be uh, properly prepared to get out there to do anything so they wouldn't have any excuse for not using us for, for various things. You know, Henry and I and uh, uh, a few other guys, you know, we're older now. So hmm. I, Henry and I was learn how to ride. We did ride horses with the, the Buffalo soldiers at that time, but Woody Strode. And, yes, and, we uh, did. <laughs> uh, yeah, we would ride. Mm -hmm. We had to learn to do these things, so we didn't want to have to uh, say that 
that we wasn't prepared, you know, riding motorcycles and different other things. So mm-hmm. uh, that's kind of the intro to what we what we were doing. You know, Henry, you want to ask anything the, to this? Speak, speak on what, what you just said, Alex. Uh, that was one of the things that we um, emphasized. And, and Eddie also uh, said when we went to those um, white stunt men and coordinators and we were saying at least give us the respect of letting us asking us if we could do the job in the beginning when we were learning everything so we said if you give us a chance and we say we don't have anybody ready yet to do the particular stunt then we will back you in painting somebody down but at least give us the respect of asking us first and so we weren't just bull guarding our way through we were trying to work through with uh you know some finesse and and get respect at the same time and so uh um that kind of worked for us at times you know brothers this whole notion of blackface is really intriguing to me because uh you know i was at a uh i guess a panel discussion about a year or so ago well yeah pre-covid uh given by the long beach opera Right. And they mm-hmm. were talking about mm-hmm. African-Americans in opera and the history of these opera companies were, you know, doing blackface mostly. And uh, they were, you know, the black opera singers were were talking about the, you know, the challenges of having to break the barriers, which is almost as identical <laughs> to what you all are talking about. You know, yeah, of course. Like yeah. to, you know, it's yeah. really, really interesting. So, you know. If they were to come out with blackface now, we would be picketing and stuff right now. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, that was the lay of the land back then. And then mm-hmm. the thing about it is, as you say, it was blackface. Mm-hmm. If you were brown, you still were black. They put mm-hmm. on, it was either black makeup or no makeup. And so when they would use a double for a black stunt, uh, actor, they would put flat out black makeup on. There yeah, was no mean, shades yeah. to it anywhere. Yeah. And so that ended up uh, is where we ended up helping to get makeup artists and even hair people mm-hmm. because when uh, we started creating jobs and they would put black makeup on, <laughs> we were going, wait a minute, you know, there's shades going on here. So they yeah. ended up having to, um, the white makeup artists were nervous and didn't quite know what to do. So they started bringing in black makeup artists. Uh, to do makeup on black stunt people and actors. And then the same situation with the hair. They had no clue how to deal with black hair. And so uh, they um, they called in black hairstylists and they were the one, they ended up getting jobs in the industry because of knowing how to deal with black hair. You know, yeah. that's really yeah. inter- an interesting point right there. I just saw an interview with the, the supermodel Imam, and she was talking about how um, in her day, you know, they didn't even have, they had to bring their own foundation for the for the makeup. <laughs> exactly. Because they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't have it, you know. Yeah, but, you, wow. you know, that was, one, that was another uh, 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 interesting point, because when we established, uh, started the Black Stomach, we were going after stunts. But it created a lot. We kind of like opened the doors for, you know, behind the camera because Eddie was the kind of guy would raise a lot of hell about various things. If he got on a set and didn't see any black people, first thing he wanted to do was go to to the producer, right? Because uh, we didn't have any black makeup. We didn't have any black wardrobe people. We didn't have black camera. We were kind of the, the forerunner in establishing a lot of that stuff that people really didn't know. Mm-hmm. And I personally was one of the ones because on The Great White Hope, we were working as extras there, mm-hmm. and there were no black people on there, no black behind the camera. Mm-hmm. So uh, Eddie went to the producer, and he would always drag me along. I was a little hesitant then. I was young and inexperienced, <laughs> right? So I had to admit that along the way. He said, come on, man. We're going to this damn producer. So we're going to ask about some people. Yeah. So mm-hmm. as a result of us going into that office, they say, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to send five people to Barcelona, Spain. That's where we had to go to, right? Uh-huh. I was one of I went as a wardrobe assistant. Eddie went as a production assistant. We had a, 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 a one lady that went as a lady's wardrobe assistant. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had five people go over there just to 
to help to come back uh, behind the camera. I didn't go as a stunt man. I went as the wardrobe assistant because if you raise hell, about it, say, well, we'll we'll send you all. You want to do that? I said, damn, I don't want to be no wardrobe assistant. I want to be a stunt man. <laughs> but we had, we had raised so much hell to when the doors open, we say, okay, well, we'll go. Well, hell, that was perfect for me. I'd never been out of the country anyway. So I was in, in the Barcelona, Spain for two and a half months helping and folding pen and, and helping uh, James Earl Jones behind the camera. Mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. that I know that have, that helped open the doors through our efforts, you know. Mm-hmm. So we uh, mm-hmm. kind of opened the doors for a lot of other uh, interesting things in the motion picture business. Yeah, departments of uh, the ADs, um, we would get black ADs that would um, get on the set because um, they didn't have, they had all white. One of the things when, um, remember affirmative, affirmative action? Mm-hmm. So there was a certain number of black folks that had to be hired in in the job, on the show. If there were so many whites because of the percentage of black folks and uh, they had to have a percent, that percentage on each show. So mm-hmm. they were in a sense required to hire, this came on later after the lawsuit. Uh, they were required to hire uh, a certain number of black folks, the percentage uh, um, on each show. So jobs, we ended up getting jobs uh, because of that, uh, which was, uh, um, um, you know, worked out real well, except over the um, period of time. Uh, and the reason uh, we got a lot of complaints about it and the thing that when Jesse Jackson was involved in starting it, his thing was, if you purposely exclude people from getting work, then you have to purposely include them. And I love that because exactly, they were purposely keeping us out of the stunts uh, and many other jobs across the country. And so when he started affirmative action and created think that they had to purposely include a lot of people uh, always got mad complained about it but how do you get people into the place into the jobs if you don't put them in and we weren't going in unqualified because as i said before when they asked the stunt guys one of the job done and uh we asked for respect asked us if we could do it then we would go in and do it. If we couldn't, we will uh, okay you to paint down somebody without any complaints. So um, that that's how we ended up getting jobs yeah. um, and keeping some jobs. You know, uh, Henry, uh, 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 like Alex said, it was the women. We had the women. Uh, you would go on a job, and before affirmative action, they were all white people. Um, then when the, uh, a, when women became a minority, uh, there was, like I said, all white people, one black person on the show. When women became a minority, all of a sudden there were five or six white women, still only one black person, one black woman on a job. So in you <laughs> in getting, uh, women as a minority to create jobs, that helped the white women more than it did the black person. And on one job, Alex said uh, to the producer, he says, well, wait a minute. If we have uh, black women, I mean, women as a minority and then blacks as a minority, then our women should be double minorities and certainly get the job before any other white women. (laughs) Uh, But they still didn't (laughs) um, weaken on it. But then we still ended up creating, you know, making some noise and ended up getting more black AD women on shows just because bringing that point forward. Yeah. You know, Henry, uh, I think we lost Greg again, but let me let me talk about. There you go. Um, oh, he's, he lost me again. So let me talk a little bit about you talked about the uh, yeah, I, I like that that concept of you purposely keep people out. You have to purposely let them in that we refer to that as intentionality. Right. And so uh, for the, those of you listening, um, one of the intentional things that has been done of late is on October 13th, we'll be celebrating the 55th uh, anniversary of 
of the BSA here in our, our garden in Lamert Park. But the reason that's so important is because um, uh, Congresswoman Karen Bass uh, took the time to uh, introduce some uh, documentation uh, that entered uh, into the 177th Congress of Record, the BSA, as part of the history of America. So we will be celebrating that. That was a very intentional thing that we wanted to see happen to celebrate the great work that you all have done. And those of you listening need to understand that, you know, especially if you're interested in the creative economy space, that a lot of ground has been laid. Um, a lot of sacrifices have been made by people like Alex and Henry and people uh, like um, uh, Eddie, who uh, came along from as far back as the 60s and continue to be involved in the good fight. You know, we, we are reminded often, there's often, often a reminder of the fact that we have to continue to fight to be have our faces in familiar places all the time. We just saw that this week with the Los Angeles City Council, and we have to continue to, to make sure that we honor the work that's been done. So I'm, I'm excited about what's coming up on the 13th, uh, gentlemen, that we get a chance to actually honor you for the work that you've done and honor the fact that you are now uh, a matter of record uh, for the 177th Congress as we enter the history books for the work that you've done. You know, I really Welcome. like that, uh, Mr. Saucedo. I, I'm gonna tell you something, I, I'm just trying to push myself out of the out of the shot there. That's what that's what I was doing. I'm still I'm still with you. <laughs> but um you know that's that's really, really profound what you just said, uh, Robert Saucedo, because as I mentioned earlier, we were with the living legends in the in the music industry. And you know, this is our kind you know, it's like a class reunion, really, you know, uh, those of us mm. who came up you know, in the in the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, you know what I mean? That, and, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, I don't have another word, but the rhetoric that was constantly spoken across the um, the podium was this thing of intentionality, you know, and, and you know, yeah, we are all good in the entertainment industry and uh, we, we're making things happen and we're driving culture and all that. But, you know, it's a fight, man. It's been a, it's been a fight ever since you know even in the music side they've eliminated black music divisions and everything and we've had to fight 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 and even in the space of black stuntmen uh association you know the black stuntmen with first of all i'm just gonna say it to you brother alex and i know uh yes. our brother will come back i mean that's a crazy job you know i'm just gonna tell you <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Greg, well greg see 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 the fight the fight never ends and it's still going on right now in all areas of our of our black lives. You know, we 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 just saw that happen. And when people ask us, well, what are you all doing right now? We try to keep this legacy alive to let people and our younger people, you know, I've got sons, Henry's got sons, and our grandson. We want to make sure that this is uh being recognized, you know, in like uh Karen did is really a, a truly a, a great honor for us. So the kids can look back and say, well, this is what we did. So we are really, as a group, not active in doing stuff. I mean, we're 75, 80 years old, so we just lucky to be here because most of our people are gone. Oh, and Henry, and uh, Henry and I, one of the, the two, we got a few this, that will be there on Thursday to represent, you know, but we've got a lot of guys that's gone. And I always try to make sure that I keep uh, Eddie's uh, name alive because if it wasn't for Eddie and, and the motion picture business, a lot of the blacks, that we wouldn't have gotten a lot of places. And I was with him most of the time because he would just drag my behind right on in the office, you know. And I, I say, well, okay. I was fortunate enough to appreciate that as I got older because I fight like hell right now. If it's something that's not right, I'm, I'm saying I don't care what area. It don't have to be stunts. It could be anything else. But we have to continue to fight. The fight never ends. And I tell all the kids, I say, look, we have got to push the wagon. If the wagon gets stuck in the mud again, it takes a lot harder to push it up out than keeping it moving. So mm -hmm. I'm saying we have to keep the fight going. That's right. Alex, let me ask you a question. Like, okay, so you mentioned uh, I'm a grandfather too. Like, you know, when you're sitting around with the grandsons, granddaughters, and you tell them the stories, yes. what's the most outrageous stunt ever that Alex Brown has been a part of? Well, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> You know, I'm not like Henry. Henry's still working. He got a bunch of those kind of stories. But you know, the uh one of my major things was, you know, blacks didn't swim too well. And I was always I would always 
get the job that get blown off into the ocean. You know what I mean? Tell me I got blown <laughs> off into the ocean in San Pedro. And the nerve of me, I, d- I had to do a, a Herb Jeffries one time. And I got blown off into the ocean out there. I said, Lord, let me get out of this water. That's all I want to do. <laughs> and most of the time, it was all water stunts for me, you know. Uh, high oh, falls, wow. uh, you know, you know, we, we did high falls, you know, four or five third buildings. I can remember something on Central Central and Jefferson up there. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Benny Moore and myself, had to get blown off together. Well, you usually don't do high falls together because somebody's going to get hurt. I said, all right, Benny, I'm going. You're going. He said, let's go. And we did make, you know, hot falls wasn't the, uh, our specialty. But in order for us not to show any fear or show that we was qualified, we just went on and did the job. And we, we uh, you know, I'm proud of our, our, our legacy and the things we've done, you know. Mm-hmm. What are yes. some of the films that we would know that you are a part of? And uh, maybe even boil it down, if I, if I can remember a scene, you say, yeah, that's me. Oh, well, one of the main ones I did was Brubaker with Red, uh, uh, Robert Redford. We did uh, Eddie and the rest of us. We we coordinated, Eddie was the coordinator on on Live and Let Die, uh, the the James Bond movie. When we had all these blacks in there, we did the whole we did that whole movie, uh, all the stunts in that movie. That was that that one to live in there because you know how the James Bond movies keep going on and on and on. You know. So Live and Let we, Die. That's the one with. Uh... Yeah, Roger Cotto. Moore. Oh, Roger yeah, Yav- Moore. Yav- okay. Yeah, Yavi Cotto and, uh-huh. and uh, Roger Moore. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, we you know most of us worked in Roots. Uh, uh, what else did we do back then? I, I always say, well, you know, my grandkids know my my resume better than me sometimes. You know, uh, but, can you imagine your grandkids are like around yeah. their homies and like, yo, that's my papa right there. Right. <laughs> Well, yeah, I yeah, because I double, I double hoppo, I double hoppo in in uh, color purple, you know, you know. I every when we went to fill through that roof up there, and they say, I say that wasn't him, that was me. They say, oh, that was you falling through the roof. Yeah, that was me. Right. When uh, I left straight from there and went to the hospital too. <laughs> oh, you know, I was going to ask you, you know, there's all this national conversation now in the National Football League about concussions and and all of the concussion protocol and all that kind of stuff. You know, how in the stuntman, I mean, I, I would say without the equipment, it's equally as rough and tumble as the NFL, baby, you know. So, are you know, what kind of injuries do you sustain and are you OK nowadays? Uh, uh, you know, what's the deal? Well, I know Henry must be standing by somewhere. But anyway, that's that's part of this business. I mean, you look, if you don't get a, get scared when they say roll that camera, you, you need to be somewhere else. Because when they say roll that camera. It's on you. Everybody on that set is looking at you, you know. So you could look at a stunt, tell them, say, oh, my God, this was going to hurt. This is going to hurt bad. But you want to do it with as less pain as you could possibly do. Uh, and it's more dangerous, I think, than football because they do have pads. We don't have helmets on. You can't do a stunt in helmets. You got to do, you know, we could put knee pads, elbow pads, or back pads. But when you hit that ground, it's all you and that pad, mm-hmm. you know. So it's the business in itself demands a lot of courage and a lot of pain you know mm-hmm. but uh you know it's residual after a while you just try to live with it you take your advil some people went a little further than that a lot of a lot of the white guy went you know to other stuff but mm-hmm. I, I can honestly say none of the, the black guys got involved in a lot of uh you know drugs or anything because mm-hmm. we didn't want our our situation to get any worse than it was so we just stayed with whatever little pain we could get going to mm-hmm chiropractor going to acupuncture uh other you know physical therapy but uh we we were fortunate enough to get out of it we we, we had a couple of people to get to, to i forgot the name of them we lost a a, a stunt girl some time ago mm-hmm. uh but uh, basically you know, it, it's it's all pain mm-hmm. and courage and trying to we 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 kind of went overboard because we wanted to make sure we did the job right and not have a complaint about to say well uh, I'm proud to say that when we came through we did everything we could do to make our uh, community look look better and help the younger the younger ones that came behind us get jobs like they mm-hmm. are right now. I'm mm-hmm. proud of the fact that the younger black guys that are working and now a lot of them are not because this is uh, some time in business, mm-hmm. you know. So mm-hmm. you get, uh, I would always tell the young ones, 
look, you're going to get a good job. You're going to make a dollars $75,000 on one job, and you're going to go out and buy all these cars and houses. I say, save your money because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you might not know when you might not get the next job. Mm-hmm. See, it's, it, it gives you a false illusion of getting rich, which is, is not, you know. You mm-hmm. get this job here, then you got to wait till you get the next job. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a I have a good friend who's a working actress. Uh, she's on the radio at KJLH. That's Tammy Mack. And every time I talk to Tammy, she's uh, I mean, you can see her on a ton of commercials, a few movies here and there. And she's always going to an audition, you know, and I know that that's the actor's plot is go to audition after audition after audition. What's an audition or how does a stunt person get a job in Hollywood? What is that like? Uh, Henry, you there? He's not here. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, the first thing is, that was one of the main things we had to do when we were with the EEOC and, and complaining and uh, about getting jobs. Mm-hmm. See, the the producers and the directors and, and, and the writers all were white at that time. Mm-hmm. Nepotism was running rampant. We couldn't get jobs. We didn't know the people. So we had to start fighting for the job of uh, stunt coordinator is the person that the production company hired to hire stunt people and select the people they want to hire to get the jobs. Unless you knew a stunt coordinator, mostly white at that time, that you could not get the job. You had to go around and what we call hit the bricks and go from studio to studio, see what jobs were up, what coming around. Uh, so our one of our main things was to get stunt coordinators established in these production offices so we could get the black guys to hire other black people you know so we finally we finally broke through that ceiling a little bit it wasn't that we uh made any significant uh we did and we didn't but not as still as much in the as many productions was going on that we didn't have enough coordinators to you know uh hire other people so when we got other black sun coordinators into the business they're part of their uh their job and responsibility to make sure that we have a certain amount of blacks on that job because we had put a lot of energy into trying to break through that 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 ceiling of being stunt coordinators you know i mean we went out to uh universal warner brothers 20th century we were going into those production i was talking to the presidents and the attorneys we called hell there for a minute you know talking to these people about these jobs we want jobs you know so mm-hmm. eventually mm-hmm. they decide especially universal and, and uh and 20 other thing kind of kind of relinquished the idea and started hiring uh stunt coordinators because they had to mm-hmm. call the production office and producers to say look these people need jobs too you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. they kind of acquiesce to the fact that uh okay we're gonna let them run this job well we kind of start off with tell them let these guys assist, be an assistant coordinator. And they can mm-hmm. put the names in. So we mm-hmm. didn't go on audition, so to speak. You just had to be uh, convinced that the white stunt, a stunt coordinator that you was capable of the job. So he let you, you know, come out and get the job, you know. Mm-hmm. And they had what they call adjustments. You know, you do a certain amount of jobs, and that depending on the danger involved, we would get what they call adjustments, right? Over and above your daily rate, right? If you did mm-hmm. a real good job on something, and it required a lot of danger and stuff. You could get four or five hundred dollars over. Well, yeah. that wasn't always the case with us. We yeah. you get the job, but we, we might not get the adjustment. So we had mm. to kind of start focusing on that that part of it too, you know. Man, but man. Uh, it's still now, were you a, uh, were you aware that? Well, okay. So, like, I heard from uh, Marge Krieger that you know one of the principal advocates for your sector was Clarence Thomas. And uh, were you aware of that? And then how do you look at Clarence? How do you contrast Clarence then (laughs) with the Clarence Thomas now? (laughs) Look, well, 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 yeah, look, we didn't know when we got the EEOC involved in this. There's a thing that came from Washington. But when we would start saying we want the EEOC, we would we would sue everybody with getting government money. You know, you you'd be surprised at how many films they make for the army and the Marines and they get so that's where we really basically got started. So we said we want equal opportunity. This is when uh Kennedy was alive, you know. Uh uh so uh they sent a man from the EEOC 
we didn't know was uh, Clarence Thomas was over the EOC by the name of Gene Clark. He came, we come from Washington every time we would complain. So when he would come, he would tell us, look, this is what I need you all to do. I'm coming out here. I want you to have the date, time, and place. I use that right now. So we can verify these things so we would know what we're fighting for, you know? So he got sick and passed. Then another little white in interim guy came and he didn't, he wasn't he didn't have enough heart to continue to fight because it was it was brutal back then. Then Marge came and she was a young white girl for we said, man, this little white girl is not gonna be in our corner. So she stayed with us. <laughs> That's when we found out that Clarence Thomas was the one that sent her. We didn't know the went well. Clarence Thomas then was Clarence Thomas. We didn't know who he was. But man, when uh, we found out he became a Supreme Court, we really don't, I really, I, to be truthful with you, I really don't give a damn about him right now myself. I ain't. Right. When we went, you know, when we, <laughs> when, when we went to Washington to, to open up the museum, of course, you know, we're in the, the Black History Museum there. We opened that up. Henry and I, we went to the initial opening before it opened. Mm. And somebody said, well, Maybe you guys ought to take a picture with Clarence Thomas. I said, y'all crazy. I ain't taking no picture with that man. They'll never have that never be seen. I don't never be taking no picture with Clarence Thomas ever in life. I don't hey, care who he is. Alex, I have a question for you. So, you know, we've got a number of African Americans now who have studios. Um, you've got uh, Tyler Perry, Lisa Ray has her series of shows. How how was DSA integrating into that platform? Well, you know, that's after our, our situation. You know, we, like I said, we gone. I don't know what the, a lot of the black guys are working for Tyler. So that's a good thing. That help that helps everybody. You, mm -hmm. Tyler has created a whole different kind of thing and made them stop and take note of the fact that uh, we can build studios. We can hire, you know, have stages and name, name each studio after one of our famous uh, black actress or actresses that has helped, uh, you know, help us along the way. Mm -hmm. Now, uh i have to say that uh some of the black well-known actresses and actresses that kind of help us get get started because without their support a lot of the time we couldn't get the job because we would say ask for a black stunt guy ask for a black stunt. Mm -hmm. well they couldn't make a lot of noise either because they were just catching hell trying to get a daily job too you know mm -hmm. but the ones that did stand up and i put emphasis on that of course you know sydney did uh, 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 Bill Cosby was there. See, a lot of us don't like to mention that, but see, you can't erase history. Bill Cosby stood up for us a lot. Whenever Bill was on the job, he told Eddie, and I was there plenty of those times, if they don't know how you all give me a call, I'll call that office and tell them, make sure we got black folk in the, in, behind the camera too. So Bill, regardless of what happened in these later years, I always have to give this man his just due credit because I just don't feel like uh, I'm going to erase that history. It's going to be, it's going to be there. And I, I appreciate his effort. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Robert Hooks, uh, Roscoe Lee Brown, G2 Kambuku. I could go on and on. Uh, Albert uh, per uh, uh, Perry, a lot of them that was supported us and started letting, uh, asking for black stunt people because they didn't want the white boys uh, doubling them either. Mm -hmm. So they helped us by requesting that they needed a black stunt coordinator. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, I appreciate me, what Tyler Perry is doing. Let me ask you about on set safety. You know, I mean, your job of course, is is uh, quite dangerous and everything. And now, you know, in the news, we're seeing this whole thing on uh, with uh, Alec Baldwin's, uh, you know, the gun went off and killed the cinematographer there and uh, just a tragic, tragic event. How does something like that happen on set? Well, it, I've been involved with a lot of gun shooting stuff. I, I, I really feel sorry for him because when the, when the, when the uh, special effects man and, uh, and the armor always would give us uh, guns, mm -hmm. first they give you the gun empty. Mm -hmm. We uh, be in a circle. He give you a gun empty. He said, "Look, this is what this is what the scene is." He said, "I want you to open up this chamber, and make it, make sure everything is empty, and then we're gonna pass out these ammunition." Now, uh, 
we want these guns pointed down until we ready to go shoot uh whatever we got to do you know we did a lot of police stuff back in that in those days too you know mm-hmm. so uh and i really don't know they was responsible for giving us the ammunition and putting the guns in and you keep it you know keep it up in the air down on the ground do not point this gun at any at one person until it's time to do the scene mm-hmm. now I wouldn't. I, I oftentimes I said this man's getting caught in the middle here. He's really in the middle because he's not the person that's responsible for those guns. And when mm-hmm. you get those guns, what if you if you uh, gun you begin to be, able, you would always check your own thing anyway. You want to be pointing that gun at anybody, but mm-hmm. he was in the middle of the scene, so naturally. And then another thing, it's kind of on the cameraman's people too, because because when we had guns, they would have a shield up like we like we have right now for the stewards and stuff, usually mm-hmm. the camera crew would have a shield in front of them. If they had to shoot, you know, shoot into the camera, you know, mm-hmm. a plastic shield. So mm-hmm. I don't know whatever happened to that either. I can't, I can't make any decision on that. I'm just telling you the things that we've experienced. I have, you know, when you have mm-hmm. a gun, we got specific instruction on what to do and what not to do with that gun before you fired it, you know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. All right, what's your proudest number one accomplishment that you just uh, like, okay, that movie was the bomb. What's your number one stunt? Well, there's not a lot of, lot of number ones because all of them are number ones, but you know. Alex uh, says, shoot, I'm I, good. What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, let me tell you. I, I I know I'm pretty good. I don't, I'm not saying, and there's a lot of guys better than me. Some of us were better in different areas than others, you know. Uh, but you you got to be an all around kind of person. That's why when we when we train, we try to learn a little bit of everything. And I uh, I no, I couldn't swim. I went down to Long Beach one time. They're going we gonna have a swimming swimming class, mm. and it's, and uh, they told us to jump in the pool, and swim from one side to the other. Mm. Well, this get the, the instructor name is Greg Barnett. So they said jump in the pool and go across. Well, my ass was going to the bottom. So he, Greg called me very quietly and said, come, come here, Alice, let me, I'm going to give you your money back. I'm going to give you a, a private lesson. You just, don't worry, don't worry about this. <laughs> so, but uh, overall, uh, you know, car chases and stunts and crashing is always the most dangerous thing. That's one of the hindrance specialties right now. But when you're doing fights, high falls, water, and horses and stuff, when you hit that ground, it's all the same. You know, we did a, a couple of things called a stuntman years ago and I, had to get hit by a car. Taking car hits is always dangerous because you don't know where you're gonna land when you come off that car. And believe me, it tells it tells on you too, you know. But uh, I think I think uh, I think we like uh, I like the color purple and I like uh, live and let die because at that time it was no no blacks doing that Jane Bond movie stuff. So yeah, we did yeah, yeah. we did all that. You know, I'm proud of the fact that too. We we had to raise hell about that now. It didn't right. fall to get that job. It wasn't like we just got it, but you know, uh uh with Cubby Broccoli with the you know, was uh the main producer there. Mm-hmm. And uh he said, Yes, we're gonna have black sun court and there black people and Henry and myself was both on that on that movie the whole time. You know, Alex, I got my first introduction to uh stunts and how the concrete is not like uh, a rubber mattress uh, when I had my first motorcycle accident. Uh, it, was, it was not fun. A tough job. What happened? Uh, I lost it for a minute. I, said, I, I got a chance to be introduced to falling on the concrete when I had my first motorcycle accident. Uh huh. And it was not fun. No. And it took, <laughs> took months of healing. Wow. Yeah. No. And, and when we go down, I, I, in fact, in fact, in fact, on living that I had to do a, a, a lay that bike down purposely. Now, when you see yours came accidentally, I knew where I had to fall for them to get the shot. Right. Mm-hmm. So when they're coming into the shot, you got to lay that back down. And my head hit that concrete and that, that helmet, that helmet popped like a watermelon. Wow. And that hadn't been for the helmet and boots and slides and stuff, you know, <clears throat> we had to do that thing a couple of times, you know. Wow. Yes, yeah, I was gonna ask you uh, how many how many takes do you have to do? You know, well, you you only see the one that they like. 
And you done got three or four before. <laughs> you then you get up and tell you, say so you you got another one in you, and you know your ego and everybody said, Yeah, I got another one. You know, I let's try it again. <laughs> you said, Lord, let them get, get this one. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Now, do you go to the movies now, Alex? Yes. Are you a good are you an avid moviegoer? Uh not avid. When time comes oh. for uh nominations and stuff, I, I look to see who did what. You know, mm. we in fact they just had the, the Stuntman's Award show last week at a Paramount Studios. I went over there, but mm. uh, again, wasn't a lot of black guys nominated. Yeah. <laughs> there was not, no, you know, Henry's got a he won a couple of them because Henry's with a group now that worked quite a bit. You know, so Henry now did all I, I, I want to <laughs> let me touch on that because I heard you say that a couple of times during our, during our broadcast here. So Henry's still working. Oh, hell yeah. I try to tell that boy he's going to leave out of that business drooling in, in his mouth. Henry, <laughs> Henry, had, Henry, and he knows that's what I was telling Henry has done all the, the Fast and Furious 9, the, all those movies. What? The group that he's with now. Henry does a lot of stuff right now. A wow. lot. Henry's out of the country a lot of the time doing all of that. And I said, boy, you keep taking these hits. He admit that he, uh, he's been having concussions in that car. I said, boy, you're going to be drooling. You ain't going to be able to spend that money. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. I, don't think, I don't think he does it for the money. I just think he does it for the thrill. Love, love I the think game. so, but too, because yeah, he, he he really loves it. You know, but uh, you know, I, I remember it's, it's seeing him. I remember seeing Henry when I was a kid, and uh, uh, he was the coolest cat I'd ever seen. I think he was getting out of a red Porsche, and we were like, "Who uh -huh. is that?" And they go, "He's a stuntman." I said, wow. "Wow!" And you know, growing up in L.A. You know, you, you're a natural stuntman because you know you, you. We didn't have a park in our neighborhood, so we go roof climbing and fall off, and so that's mm -hmm. that was training ground, right, Alex? Right. Oh yes, yeah. I mean, you know, we yeah. always tell a story where we had to practice with Athens Park out there, in, in in Compton. You know, that's where we got our start. We go out there and uh, practice every Thursday night and Sunday morning. We were at, at the uh, Burbank Studio to learn how to ride horses. You wow. know. So we took That's our nice. old mattresses and boxes out to Athens Park. And uh, we often tell a story that when we were out there, because the office had little jobs there. You know, I used to work for the Wave newspaper here years ago. And that, and that uh, we'd go out there after our jobs and we would go out there and practice, you know. Mm -hmm. And they'd have a little, uh, it was a railroad track out there. The cops would be sitting on the other side kind of watching it. Because when you're throwing punches, jumping off buildings, it looked like we, we were the Black Panthers or something, you know falling on the ground and hollering and grunting. They didn't know what we were doing over there. So I right. think eventually they got to find out that we were uh, beginners trying to learn how to do uh, movie stunt work over there. Wow. But uh, yeah, they used to watch us quite a bit when we had people practicing. Yeah, you know, a lot of people today don't realize Compton is an equestrian city. That's what it was then. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, you know, we used to ride horses up and down the street over there. Yeah, every now and again, you yeah. still you drive through Compton, you see somebody on a horse every now and again. Yeah. Wow! Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Isn't that something, man, Alex? This is fascinating stuff, man. And I'm gonna come through on Thursday just to meet you in person. Well, it's it's on. It's not only me. I don't. I'm I'm just representing now. Now I'm the president. Do uh, do because of uh everybody. I was the original uh the original secretary, the founding mm -hmm. secretary. Henry was the uh, founding vice president, but now, since Willie has gone, you know, uh, they forced me into the position of, of uh, representing now because uh, we got to keep going as long as some of us are living. So it is what it is, you know. And You're I don't doing mind. A stunt now doing coffee conversations with Greg <laughs> J in your car. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was determined. I had to tell these people, I gotta go. I gotta go. You know. Uh, and she see the worst thing about this particular thing today is because then I get up here and my author now say, you know what? I was missing last week. I said, did they tell you why? And her stunt died. Her her son died in in, in China. So I got to listen to that and I got to be compassionate and I got to understand. It was kind of shocking, but I'm kind of saying, come on now, I got, I got something to do. You know, okay, I, yeah, I want to make sure I get here to, to do what we're doing right now, you know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's just truly a pleasure that, you know, have had this opportunity. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, let's say somebody's listening to this, you know, some young person who now has heard you speak and they're, now they're inspired. Man, I'm going to be a stunt person, you know. What mm -hmm. advice would you give them? First thing is, like everything else, go to school because you're not promised anything in this motion picture business. Mm -hmm. Have yourself a backup. Don't get overly excited about this, this motion picture business. Everybody wants to like being football. There's only so many positions. There's so many, so many black people that's gone. You know, you look at a motion picture, ain't but one or two black. We're getting better now yeah. because of this same fight. We've we opened up a lot of doors for a lot of people, and it's becoming more, not only for us, everybody else, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, it's getting better. But I would say uh, if you want to try it, don't let other people you know, determine your dreams. Because, see, a lot of guys that started with us didn't, didn't make it because – it was hard. Mm -hmm. We we protested a lot of time by ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and I had to give Eddie all of the. the uh, you see, Eddie was a little older than us. He had been in the business, like you said, with Rochester and the rest of it, mm -hmm. and so he had he had seen all these things come along. And when we got up there, he said, "Well, we need a black stunt group," and uh, we said, "Well, come on." And then he, and as as we got into the motion picture business and began to see that with no people behind the camera too. He was just as visioned about behind the camera as he was in front of the camera, mm -hmm. you know. So I personally try to keep his, his legacy and, and uh, stuff alive because I was personally one of his main friends. He raised hell, but he'd have me doing the talking when I got it. They'd be surprised how many attorneys and, and uh, presidents we had been in front of. Mm -hmm. uh, and we didn't know uh, a hill of beans. We sit in them big tables around with little beans. I, I, I used to tell them. You, all these big lawyers in there, we would just run out and say, we didn't, we just wanted a job. We didn't know it would become uh, a living legend. We wanted a day's job, a fair working just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. That's all we wanted when we started this. Just give us the opportunity to work, you know? Mm -hmm. So hey, that's what our main problem. Main hey, Alex, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll put a proposal out to you is, um, so Community Build will be opening a third location on Crenshaw, the uh, old historic fire station right there next to U.S. Bank. We'll be nice. managing mm. that. And part of our goal is to do uh, career cohorts and with government jobs and other industries. I would love to do a uh, cohort introductory for stunt work for some of our young people. So let's let's talk about that after the celebration that we have on the 13th. That would be a great way to introduce people to the business. Yeah, maybe between now and then, when we when we talk about that, we can start getting some of the younger, the younger generation in, to give, uh, you know, talk about it. Yes, let them know what 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 it's like now trying to be a stunt person. Yes, yeah, so we could do that. Get a Yahtzee, and I mean, a, a, all those other jobs that they don't hear about. Yeah, you know, everybody American. see see everybody looking before the ahead of camera. Everybody wants to be on camera, mm -hmm. but the jobs are behind the camera. We get more behind the camera, you're gonna get in front of the camera. That's exactly right. Isn't that something that's uh, at every, almost every discipline of the entertainment industry is behind the camera. It's behind yeah. the mic, you know, is it is in the offices, a thousand jobs, you know, yeah. that you can get. Everybody doesn't have to be on the mic. You know? Right. Yep. Wow. Great stuff. You know, here we are out here advocating once again for arts and culture. Uh, this is what we do here. Coffee conversations with Greg J. We do this twice a week and uh, we're doing it from a global perspective let me leave you all with this last question there alex what about uh, as we look at say african nations you know nigeria ghana south africa having really exploding you know movie industry do you ever observe or uh you know the stuntmen in these african uh hotbeds of cinema uh yes you know, I'm kind of disgusted by, you know, Black Panther. Yeah. <clears throat> we had a lot of, uh, you know how many Black stunt people were there, and I wasn't in it. But the most disgusting thing about that is that that was, if we were still like we were, like we were when we were coming up, yeah. see, the, I had a picture sent to me that all these Black stunt people, men and women, they had a white stunt coordinator down in front of them uh. as the leader. And that every time I see that picture, it just it just really gets to me because that should have been a black stunt coordinator, mm -hmm. you know. 
And uh, I don't know who's doing it now, who the coordinator is. It's probably that same guy because he's probably in with the production company. That goes to show you when the production company and the money start coming, they're going to hire a guy they think can, can direct most of the stuff. You know, a stunt coordinator is like the second unit director. They mm -hmm. kind of direct all of the stunts and tell people who go here, what the shots are here, the camera's going to be here, and that's what I want to do there. So you kind of you kind of like the, the director's assistant when you get up there, you know. Mm -hmm. So you got a big responsibility. That includes life and limb, you know. So if something goes wrong, it's only when it goes well, they're clapping. When it goes bad, they're looking at you, say, well, what went wrong, you know. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I look at them. I was, you know, look at the African you know, it's, it's just yeah, true to true to farm fun. because you said at the beginning of the, the the struggle continues. The work is still a lot of work to be done, and you just described a present day situation. Mm -hmm. We still have to keep on climbing. Yes, man. Yeah. Well, thank you for your service, Don't get there, Alex the Brown. I, I love I love meeting you today, and I just can't wait to shake your hand and and uh, and see. I'm I'm sitting here. I'm in awe. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm looking at you now, and I'm saying, I'm, I can see you standing on the top of that car, rolling down Crenshaw on your, you know, doing coffee conversations. <laughs> I Robert, well, I was determined to get here today because, uh, you know, Robert and and Albert, they want to make sure I say I got to get here. And I had this dental appointment, so I, I, I just rushed her along with it. I said, I got to go. Man, yeah. brush me up. Let me go. You know. We appreciate you for but that. It's been Robert nice. Sacedo. I really enjoyed, enjoyed it. Thank you. Robert Sacedo, thank you for uplifting the, the creative economy in the way that you do. This is really, really important and great work. Certainly also, uh, Albert Lord, thank you also. I see you in the wings there. Uh, you know, uh, making sure that everything is tight and right. And uh, I like to thank Brother Henry. I don't know why we lost him there, but uh, hey, I you don't know, know, all good. He'll be there Thursday. All good. Yeah, he'll, he'll be, be there, there Thursday. Thursday. We'll be able yes. to take some pictures yeah. and everything like that. Any last words, Robert? Hey, look forward to seeing you both on Thursday. And, uh, and this is a very historic moment in time. And let's, let's enjoy the moment. Let's enjoy the moment. And with thank that, you very much. Uh, we'll, Yes. Y'all will go ahead and, and uh, enjoy your Tuesday. Uh, listen to us on uh, our podcast network, uh, High Heart, Spotify, you know, Apple, just wherever. Just type it in Coffee Conversations with Greg J. We're talking to black stuntmen. Boy, this is great. I'm excited. I'm going to do some stunts now. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, Greg, just stay, yeah. stay on the mic. It's too late. Stay on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> stay on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah. just shocked yourself uh, with them. <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all. Okay. As Thank we you. always say, yes, Thank take you. care, you guys. Uh, as we always Thank say, you. everybody, love one another, love one another, love one another. <sighs> Peace and blessings. <laughs>